Plains Indians had rich and varied cultures. They were skilled artists. They also had well-organized religions and warrior societies. Each nation had its own language. People from different nations used sign language to talk to one another. At one time, most Plains Indians were farmers who lived in semi-permanent villages. From there, they sent out hunting parties that pursued, that pursued on foot herds of buffalo and other animals. Agriculture, however, was their main source of food. They were different, there were different ways to hunt buffalo. Buff, before horses came to the plains, a group of hunters would shout and wave colored robes at the buffalo. The hunters would gradually drive a herd of buffalo into a corral or enclosure. There, they killed the trap buffalo. When the hunt was over, the women and children joined the hunting hunters in cutting up the buffalo and taking it back to the camp. Once they had horses, hunters would ride the horses right into the herd and kill the buffalo with bows and arrows. The Western mining boom had begun with the California Gold Rush of 1849. When the Gold Rush ended, miners looked for new opportunities. A mere rumor sent them racing east in search of new, and new, new strikes. The Central Pacific and Union Pacific met at Promontory, Utah on May 10, 1869. Leland Stanford, president of the Central Pacific, dropped a solid gold spike into a pre-drilled hole in the rail. In doing so, he joined the two tracks and united the whole country. The nation's first trans transcontinental railroad was complete. With the Civil War fresh in their minds, people cheered with the symbol of unity. The, w that, the words that were engraved on the golden spike expressed their feelings. May God continue the unity of our country as the railroad unites the two great oceans of the world. Before the arrival of settlers from the United States, the Spanish and then the Mexicans set up cattle ranches in the southwest. Over the years, strays from these ranches, along with American breeds, grew into large herds of wild cattle. These wild cattle were known as longhorns. They roamed freely across the grassy plains of, the, of Texas. After the Civil War, the demand for beef increased. People in the growing cities in the east needed more meat. Miners, railroad crews, farmers, and growing communities in the west added to the demand. The Texas Longhorns were perfect for the commercial market. They could travel far on little water, and they required no winter feeding. In the, in the 1870s, ranching spread from north from Texas and across the grassy plains. Soon, cattle grazed from Kansas to present-day Montana. Ranchers had built a cattle kingdom in the west. They came to expect high profits, millions of dollars poured into the west from people in the east. Conflicts began as early as the 1840s, when settlers and miners began to cross Indian hunting grounds. The settlers and miners asked for government protection from the Indians. The government built a, strong, built a string of forts to protect settlers and miners. In 1851, federal government officials met with Indian nations near Fort Laramie in Wyoming. The officials asked each nation to keep to a limited area. In return, they promised money, domestic animals, agriculture, tools, and other goods. Officials to, to told the Native Americans that the lands that were that the lands that were reserved for them would be theirs forever. Native American leaders agreed to the terms of the Fort Laramie Treaty. 
However, in 1858, gold was discovered at Pikes Peak in Colorado. A wave of miners rushed to the land. As settlers spread across the West, free land began to disappear. The last major land rush took place in Oklahoma. Several Indian nations lived there, but the government forced them to sell their land. The government then announced that farmers could claim free homesteads in Oklahoma. They could not, they could not take their claims, however, until noon of April 22, 1889. On the appointed day, as many as 100,000 land seekers lined up at the Oklahoma border. At noon, a gunshot rang out. The boomers charged into Oklahoma, but they found that others were already there. Sooners had sneaked into Oklahoma before the official opening and had staked out much of the best land. The Civil War showed the importance of railroads. Railroads carried troops and supplies to the battlefields. They also moved raw materials to factories. After the war, railroad companies began to build new lines all over the country. Although railroads caused certain problems, they also made possible the rapid growth of industry after 1865. Building rail lines created thousands of jobs. Steelworkers turned millions of tons of iron into steel for tracks and engines. Lumberjacks cut down whole forests to supply wood for railroad ties. Miners sweated in dusty mine shafts, digging coal to fuel railroad engines. The railroad companies themselves employed thousands of workers. They laid track, built trestles across rivers, carved tunnels through mountains, and built countless railroad stations. The growth of railroads after the Civil War spurred the growth of the steel industry. Early trains ran on iron rails that wore out quickly. Railroad owner, owners knew that the steel rails were much stronger and not as likely to rust as iron. Steel, however, was costly and difficult to make. Before the railroad boom, nearly every American town had its own small factories. They produced goods for people in the area by the late 1800s. However, big factories were producing goods more cheaply than small factories could. Railroads distributed these goods to nationwide markets. As demand for local goods fell, many small factories closed. Big factories then increased their output. Among those who came, come, came to the Pennsylvania oil fields was young John D. Rockefeller. Rockefeller, however, did not rush to drill for oil. He knew that oil had little value until it was refined or purified. To make ker kerosene. Kerosene was used as fuel in stoves and lamps. So Rockefeller built an oil refinery. Better communication was vital to growing American businesses. Some remarkable new devices filled the need for faster communication. The telegraph, which had been in, in use since 1844, helped people around the nation stay in touch. For example, a steelmaker in Pittsburgh could instantly order iron ore.
from a mine in Minnesota. In an age of invention, Thomas Edison was right at home in 1876. He opened a research laboratory in Manello Park, New Jersey. There, Edison boasted that he and his co-workers created a minor invention every 10 days and a big thing every 6 months or so. By the end of his career, Edison had earned worldwide fame as the greatest inventor of the age. No single person invented the automobile. Europeans had produced motorized vehicles as early as the 1860s. By 1890, France led the world in the automaking, and then... In the 1890s, several Americans began building cars, so only the wealthy could afford them. Workers had to adjust to the new kinds of factories of the late 1800s. Before the Civil War, most factories were small and family-run. Bosses knew the workers by name and chatted with them about their families. Because most workers had skills that the factory needed, they could bargain with the boss for wages. By 1890, one million women worked in American factories, in the, in the textile mills in New England and the tobacco factories of the South. Women formed the majority of workers in New York City. Women outnumbered men in garment in is industries. A new era of industry led to vast econ economic growth at the same time and created economic strains in the rush for profits. Many industries expanded too fast. As goods flooded the market, prices dropped to cover their losses. Factory owners often fired workers in the time. Factories geared up again and the cycle was repeated. <laughs>